I was 26 when this happened, and I was working for a cleaning company that did some of the restaurants in my city. Some office buildings too, but I was doing restaurants at the time. My shifts were late. I usually started at midnight and didn't get off until 6 or 7 in the morning. There was one restaurant I did that was located inside of a shopping mall in my city. There was an entrance right from outside, and there was one from the shopping mall as well, but that entrance was blocked off with a metal gate, so nobody could get in that way. I had to go inside the one from outside. When I got there, I was met by the security guard, Greg, as always. He was a guy in his 40s who was always friendly enough, especially for a night worker. He was a little overweight and average height. I would usually only see him at the start of my shift, and then I would call when I was done. As far as I knew, he would be away in the security room on the other side of the mall while I was working. It was around midnight when I started at this location. I had to go to one other place afterwards, because it was only a few hours of work. I was mopping the floor in the dining room with my headphones in. From where I was, I could see into the mall through one of the entrances. It was dark out there, and I could see the other closed doors in the distance. As far as I knew, there shouldn't have been anybody else there except for the security guard who let me in earlier. But just then, I saw somebody walk by inside the mall, but outside the restaurant. I wasn't scared, because I knew we were separated by the metal barricade that locked the restaurant. It was strange, though. This was only my third time doing the place, so I wasn't sure if there was anybody else who was supposed to be there. I knew it wasn't the security guard, though, because he was larger. The man I saw was thin, and he wore a baggy blue hoodie and loose pants that were too big for him. He was just walking by slowly. His hood was up, and he never looked at me, so I couldn't see his face. I stood there and watched for 30 to 45 seconds, until he made his way out of my view. Sometimes my mind plays tricks on me when I'm doing overnight shifts, but this was still early and I wasn't even tired yet, so I knew it was real. Thinking he was an intruder, I called the security guard Greg. We spoke for a moment, and then he told me that he would check the cameras. Then we hung up and I went back to work, not worrying about the person I had seen. I went back to look where I had seen him, but not surprisingly, he was gone. Security called back before I finished up, found nothing on the cameras, no sign of anyone in the mall at the time that I mentioned. I knew what I saw, and I was pretty sure he was there, so it must have been a mistake, or maybe the security guard was too lazy to actually check. Either way, security for the mall was his job. If there was a break-in, though, he would look pretty stupid. I didn't have time to do his job for him, so I let it go and went back to work. By around 6 in the morning, I was finishing up at the next location. Then I got in my car and drove home. When I got to my house, I pulled into the driveway and got out. By then, the sun was rising, but there still wasn't anybody out. I walked inside, looking forward to a few hours of sleep before doing it all again. When I was in my bedroom, ready to settle down, I heard it, a knock at my door. It was 6 a.m., so I didn't know who it could be. I opened the door a crack, the chain still latched. It looked like the man from the mall. I hadn't seen his face before, but his clothes were quite distinct. They were loose and at least a few sizes too big. I was pretty sure it was him. He looked ordinary enough in the morning light, not as creepy as before in the dark mall. The fact that he had followed me home was terrifying. Can I help you? I said tentatively. He didn't say anything for a moment, just stared, as if he was seeing me for the first time. Then he spoke. His voice was ordinary, almost friendly. Sorry to disturb you. I thought you were someone else, he said. Before I could say anything else, he turned and walked away. I watched him go to a car parked on the street a few houses down, and then he drove away. I locked the door and checked it twice, but I was feeling really scared. I thought about it for a few minutes, not able to understand what just happened. Had he followed me home after work? And if so, he must have followed me from the first place to my second job, and waited for hours. All just to come to my door and creep me out at the end of it. I never bothered calling the cops, because what would I tell them? They would think I was crazy anyway. I went to bed soon after, but woke up after only a few hours. At around noon the next day, I called the mall security to double check the security cameras. This time they told me that there was in fact a break-in at the mall that night. I still don't know why Greg didn't find him. That was little help for me, because I still had no proof that he followed me home though. The next week at work when I went back there, I kept an eye out but didn't see him again. I never found out who he was or why he was messing with me. I don't know for sure if he was dangerous. But it was definitely weird, and I wouldn't be surprised if he was crazy. At around the beginning of 2021, I lost my full-time job due to the lockdowns that were happening. Luckily, I was doing food deliveries at the time with Uber Eats. 
just part-time at first, but when I was laid off, it became my main source of income. The job market was tough in my field, so it was really my only choice. I had been doing it part-time for almost a year at that point, so the transition was not that hard. Since it was my only source of income, I would put in long hours, and always make sure to be working at the busiest times. In my city, nights were among the best times to make good money, so I worked almost every night, especially on the weekends. It was a Thursday night in February, and I began working at 6pm, ready to grind out some orders until 1 or 2 in the morning. The first part of the night went by like normal, and then at around midnight, an order came in. The destination was a spot in a part of town that I knew pretty well, because I used to live close by. It was a rougher area, and I knew there were some abandoned houses there. Some of them had squatters, and some of them were drug houses. When I first moved to the city, I rented a place in that neighborhood, because it was cheap and I didn't know any better. But I moved out as soon as my lease was up. Basically, it was the sketchiest part of the city, and that's where my next order was going to. When I arrived at the destination, the house looked abandoned, and the unkempt yard at the front was overgrown. It really looked like nobody lived there, because there were no lights on, and no car in the driveway. I looked closer at the place, almost expecting the windows to be broken or boarded up, but they were actually there. I stayed in the car for a moment, staring at the structure. I considered cancelling the order, but then thinking it might be a mistake, I decided to reach out to the customer to make sure it was the right place. I grabbed my phone and sent a quick text, asking if I had the right address. The reply came almost immediately, confirming that I was in the right place. He also told me to go up and knock on the front door. Hesitantly, I got out of my car and approached the house. The walk to the door felt longer than it should have. I was feeling uneasy because the whole thing didn't sit right. I was almost expecting someone to jump out and mug me at any second, so I was looking over my shoulder as I walked. The cracked pavement of the front path was uneven, and I almost tripped once but eventually I made it to the front door. Standing in front of the door, I hesitated. This didn't seem right. Delivering food to a place that looked abandoned at this hour was beyond unusual. Still, I raised my hand and knocked on the wooden door. Nobody answered, so I stood there like an idiot for about a minute. Then my phone went off. It was another message from the customer. This time they told me to go into the house. That was out of the question. I am stupid, but not that stupid. No part of my job required me to step into a customer's house. I quickly typed a response, saying that I was not going to go in. I asked them to come out to the door instead. As I sent the message, I glanced back at one of the dark windows, half expecting to see somebody. But there was nothing, just the dirty black glass. I waited another minute, then I walked back towards my car. I got back into the driver's seat, and then sent another message. This time I said that I would leave if he didn't stop messing around. There was no reply right away, and as I sat in the driver's seat, I scanned the area, hoping to catch a glimpse of the customer or any sign that it wasn't a complete waste of time. The neighborhood felt deserted, there was not a single light in the windows of any of the neighboring houses. After a while, I opened my phone hoping for a response. I still had hope for a reasonable explanation, but there was nothing new. With that, I had given up on this person. I was pretty sure that at best it was some sick joke. At worst, it could have been some kind of trap. I shifted my car into drive and got out of there immediately. As soon as I was able to pull over, I marked the order as not able to be delivered, and then I tossed out the food. That's Uber policy, unfortunately. I know it's a waste. I still wonder what the story was behind that order. I don't know if there was actually someone in that house waiting for me. And if so, why wouldn't they simply come to the door? It was like they were trying to be creepy, just seeing how much I would put up with. I think I went along with more than most people would have, but everyone has their limits. Walking to some strange abandoned house in the middle of Sketchtown is beyond mine. I was doing night shifts at a gas station when I was younger. I still lived with my parents back then, but I was in my 20s. It was too expensive for me to move out without a better job, so that was my life at the time. I'm in my 40s now, and I've moved on from both the job and the living situation, so this is a distant memory. I do think it's worth sharing, though. It was around 1 in the morning, and the streets outside were almost deserted. I was behind the counter, idly flipping through a magazine, when I heard the sound of a car pulling into the parking lot. Glancing up, I saw a small car park at the far end of the lot, away from the pumps. The place was well lit in general, but that corner was a bit darker, more secluded. I could still see the car, though. A man got out of the car and walked into the store. He was of average build, wearing a jacket and a baseball cap pulled down low. 
He also had a bushy brown beard, so I couldn't really see any part of his face except for the small area around his eyes. He approached the counter and asked for a pack of cigarettes. His voice was calm, nothing unusual there. I fetched the pack, rang it up, and he paid in cash. There was a brief exchange of nods, a thanks from him, and then he walked out, the door chiming softly behind him. I went back to my magazine, thinking nothing more of it. But then about ten minutes later, I looked out to the parking lot. To my surprise, the car was still there, parked in the same spot. It didn't bother me, because I figured he might have had a reason to stay a bit longer. Maybe he was figuring out directions, or possibly having a smoke, before taking off. But then, an hour ticked by, and the man's car still hadn't moved. Cars usually don't stay in this lot long, especially not without anybody coming back to check on them. I began to wonder if something had happened to the man. The idea that he might have been sleeping in the car crossed my mind. With that thought, I decided it was best to check on the car, just in case the guy needed help, or if there was some other explanation. The gas station was empty again, with no sign of other customers, so it was a good time to go. I grabbed a flashlight from behind the counter, telling myself I was just being cautious. It was a cool night, and I zipped up my jacket as soon as I stepped outside. I approached the car, shining the flashlight inside. It was completely empty, no sign of the man or anyone else. I turned around ready to head back, but on my way, I looked one more time over to the car. That's when I noticed something even more alarming. The license plate was missing. That was when I knew something was up. I hurried back inside and picked up the phone. Dialing the police felt like the only logical step. I explained the situation as calmly as I could, even though I was worried that the driver would come back. If the car was involved in something, then he may have been dangerous. The dispatcher assured me that somebody would be out to check on it soon. Finally, a patrol car pulled into the lot and two young officers got out. I met them at the door, quickly explaining what I knew, and I led them to the abandoned car. They walked over to it while I watched from a distance. One of them had a flashlight out, and the other had his hand near his weapon. It was not drawn, but I could tell that he was ready. They peered inside, probably checking the car's VIN number, and then one of them took out his radio and started speaking, but I couldn't tell what he was saying. After a few minutes of back and forth on the radio, one of the officers came back to me. We're going to have to call this in and get the car towed, he said. The officers blocked off the area around the car with tape, and we waited for the tow truck to arrive. I watched from a distance as it all happened. The reality of crime touching this place, even tangentially, left me feeling vulnerable. The tow truck finally arrived, they rigged up the abandoned car, and then took it away. I walked back to the gas station, and the remainder of my shift was a blur. There was not much work to do, so I just spaced out mostly and thought about that strange guy with the car. I found myself glancing out the window, expecting to see the man return. That never happened, though. Days later, I learned from a follow-up call by the police that the car had indeed been stolen and used in a robbery the night before it was left at our gas station. I never found out what happened to the man, but I'm almost sure he must have been caught. There were cameras all over that place, and we gave it all to the cops. He even came inside. I still wonder if he was ever planning to rob me. We were alone in that store, and he could have done whatever he wanted. I'm just glad he didn't try anything. I used to work security at a small theme park near my house. I was just out of high school at the time, so it was the best job I could find. The theme park was mostly for kids. It had a small water park and some slides. Stuff like that. You had to pay to get in, but it was little more than the free jungle gyms at public parks. The area was fenced off by a pretty high wire fence. There was even barbed wire on top, and it backed onto a popular bike trail. I guess they were worried that people would sneak in. Nothing happened most of the time, and I would just hang out at the front office reading. A few times each night, I would go for a walk around the park to make sure everything was okay. I was on one of my rounds, and although it was the middle of the night, the park was well lit, at least on the main path. As I made my way through the place, I was only kind of paying attention, but out of the corner of my eye, I saw something. It looked like a person walking around near the fence. At first, I wasn't sure if he was inside or not, so I squinted my eyes, trying to get a better look. From a distance, it really looked like he was inside, but I didn't know how he got in. I slowly made my way closer to him. He was not on an actual walking path, he was just walking along the outer fence, heading the direction of the front entrance. That's where the security office was. When I got close to the man, I called out. Hello? Sir? He didn't flinch, and kept walking. I thought he was just some teenager who had snuck in for a laugh, so I didn't think it was serious. 
It did have to kick him out, though, so I kept after him. I began jogging to close the distance, and eventually I got in front of the person. By then we were near a light, and I could see him better. The person was a guy in his 20s or early 30s. He had long, messy hair and a beard. But what really struck me about this person was that he was covered in what looked like blood. As soon as I noticed that, the man looked right at me. He had a crazy look in his eyes, and everything inside me told me to run. I turned around and walked away quickly. After about five steps, I looked back and saw the man was not following me. I was relieved when I saw that, but I didn't slow down. When I got back to the office, I locked the door and called the police. By the time they arrived, I didn't know if the man was still there or not, but I told them where I saw him. There was only one way out that didn't involve climbing the barbed wire fence, and that was through me. I was watching closely, and nobody left. The police didn't tell me much while they searched, but they were there for over an hour. I still don't know what happened in there, but one thing I can tell you is that they did not bring him out. I would have seen it if they did. Before the cops left, I asked what happened, but they were scarce with the details. The officer that I spoke with did tell me he was safe though, and that was very comforting for me. Honestly, I was still really freaked out and I thought the police could have done more to help. I guess they searched the place for a bit and then they gave up. Maybe he found a way through the fence, or maybe he was still in there. I really don't know. The rest of the night was tense, and I was scared the whole time. Being there alone with a creepy guy on the loose was beyond frightening. When the sun came up, I was really relieved. At 8 in the morning, the day guy showed up, and I was allowed to go. Before I left, I filled him in on what happened. He used to work the night shift, so he told me that it was not uncommon for teenagers to sneak in for fun. The fact that the man was covered in blood, though, that was something that he had never seen. I left that morning and went to sleep when I got home. I still don't have any answers about who the man was, and the police weren't telling me anything. All I could do was keep an eye on the news and see if there were any crimes reported in the area. The only thing I could find was a report of an armed robbery on the other side of town. Somebody had held up a store at least a 20 minute drive away, and somebody was actually shot. When I looked up a picture of the suspect online, I was pretty sure it was the man I had seen at the park. As soon as I realized that, I called the cops to give them the info that I knew. I heard on the news that the suspect was caught a week later, but I don't know if my help led to the arrest. I also never found out how long he was in the park with me. I still think that guy was hiding after the cops left. It really scares me to think that we were alone in that place together all night. The only other option would be that he hopped the barbed wire fence in the few minutes after I saw him, but then again, he must have done so in order to get in. I think it's still possible that he was in there hiding until guests arrived in the morning. He would have been a scary sight for any families or kids. We didn't get any complaints though, so who knows what happened. I'm almost sure that he was the man who robbed the store though.